वेलकम टू दी सेकेंड एडिशन ऑफ अवर मंथली मीटिंग टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू हैव अगेन एज पर दी ओरिजिनल फॉर्मैट फोर केसेस विच आर प्रेजेंटेड बाय ऑर्थोपीडिक सर्जन्स फ्रॉम डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द कंट्री ऑल ऑफ देम हैव बीन fellows with me but now they are into independent uh, practice doing a lot of elizara work good elizara work uh, followed by e in each case we will do a uh, you know discussion for that particular case and then uh, we will have a talk from uh, our center where uh, dr divya will speak about a distal femur osteotomy for uh valgus though this is not elizara this is that particular talk it is related to uh, deformity correction um <clears throat> to sort of help with advice with uh constructive criticism and overall to oversee the process with me is uh, dr badri narayan who is uh, a consultant orthopedic surgeon in liverpool uh, largely uh, does a lot of uh, elizara work he's been to india multiple times as part of uh, ao courses also a good friend of mine and my very old friend dr pn vasudevan who arranges the uh, palakat deformity course every year which uh, except for this year has been a staple for uh, people wanting to learn about deformity correction so we'll start off our uh, presentations with uh, ajit uh, just a housekeeping note for the people who are presenting once you finished presenting you can please unshare your screen so that the next person can be ready and share your screen while we do the uh, discussions right so ajit yes sir uh, ajit will be presenting a case of an infected non union of the tibia which was treated by elizarov which is the standard elizarov uh, fair go on ajit sir so my screen is visible sir yes okay so i'll be presenting the case of infected non union of tibia which was uh, treated with laser of fixator i am dr ajit from navi mumbai so he is a 22 year old male he sustained open uh, grade 3b fracture tibia which was managed initially with the help of uh, spanning external fixator across the knee local flap with and uh, multiple skin graftings on presentations there were multiple exposed pieces of the bones as you can see in the clinical picture out there and uh, uh, pus from the wound so these are his clinical pictures the primary surgeon has attempted to put a uh, suture around the k wire which is uh, which was put through the comminuted pieces of the bones the clinical pictures again you can note the circumferential skin grafts all around this uh, proximal half of the leg his x rays and this is his problem list so there is a infection a non union a poor soft tissue cover a relatively small uh, proximal fragment of the tibia long comminuted segment of the exposed bones and a common peroneal nerve palsy so uh, this was the surgery which was offered for him a debridement oblique fibular osteotomy for the acute docking of around 4 cm application of the elizar ring fixator stimulant loaded with vancomycin and tobramycin and a local rotational flap for the closure which was done by a plastic surgeon these are his intra op pictures after opening the flap and during the debridement these were the loose pieces of the bones which were removed after the debridement which were devoid of any soft tissues attachment 
this is the video which shows the acute docking the video during the application of the frame you can note a folded towel which uh, was used to prevent the recurvatum deformity between the leg and the ring so these are his uh, post op x rays despite of using those towels uh, i ended up having a recurvatum deformity in the tibia and this is his wound status on day 2 you can note a marginal necrosis of the skin over there again on day 7 on day 10 again we developed a skin necrosis but we kept kept it as it is as a biological dressing but ultimately while taking the dressing out it the scab came out and again the bones were exposed so at this time i started a wax for him and shifted to ortho suv for the correction of translation and the docking so plan 1 for the translation correction was made with the ortho suv fixator and the translation corrected the left sided picture is a pre correction picture and the right sided you can note the translation is corrected there in plan 2 of the docking was made a 20 mm docking in the upper direction of the distal fragment was made as we started the docking this was his initial wound picture with the exposed bone his wound started decreasing in the size as you can see and it ultimately reduced to this so at this stage i planned a osteotomy for to continue his lengthening as i was only docking initially so osteotomy was done and the distraction was started at the osteotomy site at around uh, 0.75 mm per day as it was a distal tibia site so at around 3 months his all wounds were healed there was no discharge and the lengthening was continued the clinical pictures at 3 months you can note the docking of the middle uh, the distal fragment into the proximal fragment the plan 3 of further docking of about <clears throat> 10 mm was made to jam the distal fragment into the proximal fragment again so while the dis uh, distal lengthening was uh, continued he developed a uh, angulation at the regenerate site due to some stress in the frame so i shifted the ortho suv struts between the proximal two rings to the distal two ring to get to correct the pro procurvatum and translation and finally the alignment was restored in both ap and lateral planes so you can note there is a small callus which was bridging anteriorly in the lateral view over here so this was his function with the fixator during this time i noticed there is some internal tibial torsion in the tibia so as the struts were there between the distal two fragments i made a plan to correct that rotational mal alignment and it got corrected gradually over the ortho suv struts and then i shifted him to the straight rods so this is him at 7 months we stopped distraction at that point and accepted 1 inch of shortening as patient wanted to get back to his work as soon as possible to reduce the frame time and for the early removal of the fixator so 7 months uh, x ray showing the uh, well consolidating regenerate well healing fracture site 
he was walking with full weight bearing so his well healed fracture in all the views well consolidated regenerate in all the views and this is his gait at the time of the fixator removal there is a minimal limb due to the shortening of of, of around 1 inch is one year follow after the frame removal ap lateral and both the oblique views internal external his clinical pictures he has got knee range of around 0 to 90 degrees you can see a 1 centi 1 inch of shortening in the right sided picture in his gait at the uh, one year after the fixator removal so that was my case so i feel is adequate debridement is necessary the bone gaps are manageable a staged approach is beneficial in complex case scenarios a shortened but well healed bone allows the patient to get back to his work the next plan is for leg lengthening at the patient's convenience thank you thank you ajit <clears throat> so that's that's a perfect exposition of uh, what don't don't put off your screen as yet we may need to look at some some of the slides uh, in a bit so that's that's a perfect exposition of you know what the laser of is uh, capable of without too much of uh, difficulty so um, badri your comments your suggestions any other things that would have helped to uh, you know shorten the time or any other tips that you would like to give yeah i, th oh, I think that was, i think that was a extraordinary result you know obviously this guy is not a smoker he's a very good host for it to heal that beautifully within within 7 months what happened to the nerve did it sir, recover it got, yeah it recovered automatically sir i didn't okay. do anything for the nerve okay because i could see his gait was very good after your fixator removal so uh, and the only the only difference i mean we we do treat a lot of infected non unions with bone transport in in our unit as well but we've gone on more and more to doing transport rather than acute shortening i i suspect the that this is more or less what we had done in our unit except that we would have maintained the length and um done a distal to proximal transport uh, it would have meant that the patient needed another operation we would have mm -hmm. always um bone grafted the the uh, docking site after transport um but it's it's i guess i i, I don't know uh, maybe it's just routine that's come on after some time but i i i i used to do a lot of acute shortenings in the tibia and then i moved on more and more to transport i let's see what mangal and vasu think about that approach vasu yes. yeah good morning all good morning uh uh badri i not seen you for many many uh, many months yeah so it's a nice case and they showed the power of bilidoro i have a few things to I mean last uh, badri noticed He has completely recovered the. I can see the, I mean, the powerful or acting uh, Kibel Sanjeev tendon on his videos, gait and all. So why he is doing that? Do you really need a flap in such cases? Uh, sir, uh, is it for me? Yeah. Uh, sir, I have, what I have seen with uh, by during my fellowship days, uh, even if the small segment of bone is exposed. if you dock it acutely till the safe limit that's about 4 or maybe 5 cm the we get some free loose margins of the bone which we can close but in this case as it was a quite a big segment of bone which was exposed so i i uh, i have asked one of my plastic surgeon friend dr pachade to be with me uh, to 
uh, guide me during closure so I, even after the docking the the flaps were not uh, i mean the i was not able to close the wound so he did a rotational flap but that flap also uh, i mean it got ultimately necros so uh, so i continued the docking but i did it gradually over the ortho suv at the rate of 1 mm per day and the wound shrinked in the size no no the, generally the docking part i i routinely do on in most of these non onions because as soon as it dock it starts healing yes sir i save lot of time and many of the time i may not have to do any bone grafting later but only thing with a watch on the distal pulse yes sir yes in the upper third tibia you can do do a good amount of locking but be careful in the distal third tibia yes sir distal third you can have a kinking vessels but anyway you will always watch on the distal pulse yes sir that's good and next thing is uh, usually the flaps i do or uh, this thing only for next surgery like when i want to incise on the skin after day or or a scar it may not be possible so if you are planning for say, I mean, a flap or i mean planning for a graft or something later then a flap is good generally in even in open fractures i try to avoid flaps because it reduces the cost yes a flap is very costly that way so and uh, I, i if i remember i think i have done more than uh, 10 flaps has been completely excised from the non union by me and the flap is costing nearly 70000 to 1 lakh and that amount is enough for his illness yes sir right so and the next thing sorry go on go on go on yeah why why do you do the osteotomy of the fibula at this level upper third sir to uh, to telescope the ends i i, I failed that if yeah, i do yeah. more or less at the yeah, same level what i do you know in such non unions so we may not be successful what i retain that fibula because i can use it as a transfer later on okay. so and it's when you do an osteotomy here it can produce your ehl weakness yes sir so it's always better to do an osteotomy here and overlap it so okay. i'll at the time of transfer you can see the overlap is coming back to the position so generally i i try to avoid an osteotomy at that level okay sir but overall you have been uh, with it and perfect deformity correction has been done i think the hard work really pays for it and in this age, this age you must continue doing this sort of hard work to make the precision perfect there and your frame is very strong thank you sir so uh, vasu that yeah. means if 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 plastic surgery saves the guy a lot of money you are not charging enough because plastic surgeon has to <laughs> has to charge less than you so that is something <laughs> for you to consider but this as i said this was an excellent um, case i have two or three sort of suggestions slash uh, comments one is even if you are doing a flap right um the 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 moment you see that there is some um, there is some uh, necrosis of the edges or there is tension because you have the elisar of you can always shorten it further right that will take away your uh, edge the the issue of uh, tension uh, there are good papers which we have discussed earlier by a chap called uh, adam learner where or, and even uh, rosbrook where they talk of deforming the bone so that your your soft tissues get uh, apoes right. that's another option that you can you can look at especially because you are comfortable with the use of six axis so even if you create a deformity once the skin is healed you can correct uh, the deformity i think the second thing that uh, this thing this case showed was the usefulness of uh, six axis systems even in so called standard you know uh, uh, the the non unions or gap non unions because getting good alignment is very important for healing also not only does it look good but it's important for healing so with the use of a six axis you are able to uh, correct you should try and get it perfectly perfect on on day one but all of us know that it's not always possible so with the six axis yes as you showed you can play with the non union side as well as the uh, you know the the uh, lengthening side only one question i would kind of point uh, point out just go back to your uh, fixator yeah uh, his clinical picture with the yeah 
you know these rods <laughs> the rods that you have on the non union side when you have such a long distance i would prefer to use a graduated telescoping rod in that long distance because over that long distance these uh, thin rods tend to be a little uh, unstable so even if it's a long regenerate that i have transported once the transport is done i will change this with to a graduated telescopic rod so that all around i have got a sort of a slightly uh, stiffer construct so overall i think uh, badri what were you saying that you you essentially what he was doing was a transport only he was compressing above and distracting below you are muted badri you are muted sorry sorry i i thought he had done an acute shortening and he was just lengthening at the top so th this was this was a transport he, he i agree oh, he, yeah he did a certain amount of shortening okay yeah and That's then the continued point. the shortening at yeah. a uh, gradual rate okay. so okay. i i think you will agree with you know when you've got a gap like yeah. what uh, vasu said that 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 part can be closed uh, acutely if it's not a very large gap and Absolutely. then remaining stuff you can do because if this was a transport frame then again you, with a transport frame you have to be absolutely perfect in terms of your alignment yeah you know both in the ap as well as the lateral so that that i think is is kind of the 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 goal to uh, aspire to that okay i will every time get my frame uh, like that but otherwise i think this this was essentially it was a, a transport for practical purposes so that that was a good case to uh, sort of start off with underline the importance of the laser yeah. yeah mangal one more yes. one more point yeah. you can stop sharing yes uh, mangal one more uh. yes vasu yeah. so when there is a good internal uh, that be internal stability at the non union site by docking yes then that four rod is good enough but yes. that is not good for a lengthening that is for, for a region rate is not adequate yeah region rate is not adequate yes. so region rate the options are now you can add more more rods yeah that one option the other one is you can keep pipes yes that's what that that's what i mean by graduated uh, yeah. telescoping rod it's it's a larger yeah uh, diameter okay so the the next case again is a gap but this is a gap brought about by a, a tumor pankaj <clears throat> so pankaj is in uh, also in uh, mumbai is actually close to where i work so is my screen visible yes <laughs> good morning sir good morning everyone uh, presenting the case of gct which causes bone defect and we have done a bone transport in it so a 25 year male presented uh, to us with pain in swelling of left knee since 4 month the x ray showed lytic lesion on the left side and biopsy confirmed it was a gct of uh, left knee uh, left femur he was advised curettage and bone grafting the patient was hbs positive but on the morning of the procedure at 6 am he had fall in bathroom which caused fracture a pathological fracture of distal femur this was his x ray to uh, now the things uh, to be addressed uh, was the fracture at the site of the tumor the length of the tumor uh, needed to be excised if uh, adjuvant therapy like uh, cleaning up with phenol is uh, helpful or not it was a questionable thing to us uh, now we have to do the choice between the mega process and arthrodesis due to uh, spillage of the tumor material uh, there were many issue with the patient one issue was his budget for mega prosthesis now if mega processes was not to be done so we have to dock uh, or do the arthrodesis at the site of uh, fracture so the things to be tackled were uh, shortening and the alignment of the lower limb uh, preserving the function of the quadriceps and the choice of implant would be lrs or ring fixator i would prefer ring fixator uh, because i am quite confident uh, with it so the tumor excision and adjuvant therapy was done by a senior surgeon uh the plan was to acutely dock the knee apply a pre constructed ring uh, frame fixator i have used all pin frame uh, due to immunological status of the patient uh, and uh, 
uh, avoiding the pricking of the uh, wires while the procedure. Uh, we have fixed the patella to the tibia to maintain the length of quadriceps. Then uh, now we have to decide whether we have to do a corticotomy at the tibia and do the lengthening or do a distraction histogenesis between femur and tibia. And I have preferred a uh, distraction histogenesis uh, between femur and tibia. <clears throat> so this was the amount of the bone resected, about 12 centimeter of the distal femur. And this was the plan to apply a uh, fixator. I have ke kept an uh, extra amount of rod below uh, to do the distraction. This is the intra-op image showing the fracture at uh, distal, pathological fracture at distal femur and also there was an intra-articular extension. The tumor size was measured around 12 centimeter. The bed was prepared uh, with 3% uh, of, 6% uh, uh, of phenol for three minutes. And the acute docking of femur over tibia was done with patella fixed to the tibia. This image also shows the uh, huge amount of bulging of tissue, which was uh, considered before planning, and hence the ring size was uh, a, a ring, ring size used were uh, uh, a, a larger ring size. This is the post-op image of the patient. This is the post-operative X-ray. On X-ray, the alignments look. Uh, quite good, but there was slight distraction at the site of docking. So it was the uh, docking site was further compressed for uh, 5 mm. And this is the image which shows that uh, the femur has been telescoped in tibia. This is the active SLR of the patient at uh, post op day 7. And this is his walking video showing around 14 centimeter of the shortening. This is one month post-op x-ray. There was no uh, bone formation. The uh, distraction was started at three uh, weeks. And this was around four months. At three months, we were quite depressed that nothing was seen. Uh, no bone formation was seen uh, at the site of uh, distraction. But at four months, we can see that uh, there, is, there is some amount of histogenesis. This was the skin condition at four months and the patient performing active SLR at four months. This was uh, the X-ray at six months where we have stopped the distraction, uh, distraction and uh, the limb length was kept shorter by two inches. Uh, sorry, one inches. This was his X-ray at nine months showing good bone formation. And this is his walking video. At nine months, I have uh, done the stress test and sent back the patient to review after uh, one week, but due to lockdown, he was not available. And this is when the lockdown end patient re uh, returned to me and this uh, removal was done, uh, fixator removal was done. And this is his regenerate at the end of one year. This is his recent X-rays after 15 months of uh, fixator, uh, fixator application. So my uh, take home message is uh, there is benefit of distraction uh, osteogenesis. It is a cheaper procedure. No revision is needed. Osteogenesis of larger bone defect is uh, possible. The drawback is it requires long term follow up. The patient, sometime patient may, uh, we may lose the patient. Patient education and compliance is very much needed in our procedure. We have to tackle this pin track infection. Uh, any uh, and my conclusion for tumor is any bone swelling must be bi uh, biopsy proven. If any doubt, we should involve our senior or take uh, an expert opinion. Uh, the excision of tumor with exuant therapy, if needed, should be done. Uh, for Elizaro part, uh, we should always plan our ring, uh, ring size uh, as per length, placement of wires and pins. Also, uh, post uh, handling of post-operative tissue. A uh, patient should have regular follow-up and adequate physiotherapy is needed. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Just, just keep it on. Again, yeah. we need to go on to... So, uh, let, me, let me start off. Yes, sir. Uh, this 
I, uh, you know, uh, Pankaj, you yes. should buy a lottery ticket. So, because you are, you and the patient also, you are a lucky man. Yes, sir. So you will definitely hit a lottery. The reason I say that is, um, you have got regenerate. This thing has uh, healed. But if I were in your position, I would be very apprehensive about uh, obtaining healing in an area which has been a sort of abnormal bone, then has been treated by phenol. Sir. Uh, what is your, everything else being the same, what is your objection to keeping that femur and tibia in contact? And doing an osteotomy, uh, you know, further away. You have distracted only that gap, no, which you had compressed. If yes. I'm mistaken. So, what was wrong with doing an osteotomy and uh, lengthening it through that? Because that's an area which is kind of virgin. Yes, sir. It will give you very good uh, bone, yes. and if you do the osteotomy well. They invariably heal, especially a person who's an expert like you, who knows how it is to be done, who knows about the stability and all that. You will not have a problem with regenerating bone through an osteotomy and maybe two osteotomies also if, if required so that you, you gain your length uh, quicker. So that is one question. And the yes. second part is a comment or rather just a tip that sometimes if you have this problem that when you acutely shorten your longitudinal incision becomes uh, you know transverse and bulging yes sir. and what i have done is i pull it out a little to length again and just suture it longitudinally and then do a what i call an accelerated docking once the skin has healed you start compressing it because you know that your alignment is good it allows you to close your skin and then uh, you know get it together and of course the point that you made about planning for this and having a larger ring is very very important so now you can you can answer that question why you didn't want to do a osteotomy sir i was very apprehensive to up to 3 uh, months uh, i would definitely prefer uh, osteotomy at uh, the tbl site okay. uh, but uh, uh, I, I went to free few literature before the surgery and they said that we can it is doable thing uh, but after doing also, I was not convinced. And uh, secondly, the thing was that if I am uh, transporting, uh, doing a larger transport at TBR, there was high chances that I would get an equinus. So I have to construct a ring which uh, would control this equinus deformity also. So I thought to give a try, we, uh, explain the patient to wait for three months. If it is not working, then we will uh, do uh, uh, osteotomy at uh, tibia and we will start uh, with regenerative at tibia. Okay. So, in short, if you get the same case again, you will do a tibial osteotomy and not... I will prefer a tibial osteotomy any day because uh, I don't want to uh, be under same pressure for three to four months okay. and explaining the patient that, uh, yes, regenerate will come. We should wait for a few weeks. We should wait. So, that means, that means you have already learned your lesson. We don't need to teach you a lesson. Yes, sir. <laughs> Badri, uh, I, I don't, I, I, as I was telling Mangal yesterday, I don't do tumor surgery of any kind because all these just go off to a peripheral tumor unit. I suspect they were, uh, not, not a peripheral tumor, a central tumor unit in the country. I suspect they were done a prosthetic replacement, even if, even though this guy was very young. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, uh, doing a trying to lengthen through an area of recently operated bone i think it was an incredible result to get that good a result vasu i no no i was confused initially seeing the images so how without a corticotomy just resection and uh, any uh, uh, a pathological area how can you get a how can you distract that was but anyway that proved Maybe because some the region in the periosteum above the tumor must have been helping him. But as Mangal said, my choice would have been an acute docking uh, through a transverse or z plasty incision and double corticotomy on the femur and tibia. So that I've done, I have a few cases, maybe five, six cases. So it's all in total excision and do this. I think that gives the most reliable 
and most time saving because I'll be doing double level correction. So we can save a lot of time. Right. And, the, and the maintenance of the quadriceps function. That was, he, he, he was mentioning that. So mm -hmm. in a fused knee joint, what are the functions of quadriceps? Just, just to uh, pull it up, more, more the hip flexors are, are required. Yeah, hip flexors right. are anyway, is there, no? Yeah, yeah. So, but essentially, I mean, I, I think the point he was, he was uh, trying to make and uh, not explain properly is that uh, function of the limb yeah. is also something that you need to uh, stress on in the sense that activity, muscle strengthening of all the other muscles that are required is something that is important. Now, what what I do is I just keep the docking femur tibia yeah. and use the patella as a graft. I just take it out yeah. and just like a graft at the non -on insert above and below, keep one wire from the patella to the femur, the other wire from patella to the tibia yeah. and uh, maybe six weeks I take it out and come That helps to fuse. Yeah. Yes. So the, the, the sort of Lessons I am taking away from here are one, as far as the tumor is concerned, uh, it has to be treated on its own merits by a person who is uh, sort of uh, an expert in terms of, of the tumor. Uh, when that person has treated the tumor and a gap is created, then uh, the Elizarov is a good method for uh, dealing with that gap. Uh, personally, I think in all situations, I mean, uh, for a young person, even in, in the West, I think doing a, a, a fusion is still an option in sort of relation to the number of revisions that would be required uh, for uh, this kind of, you know, tumor because uh, uh, not revisions, I mean, a prosthesis because prosthesis, younger people, revisions and revisions are a, a method of, uh, you know, they, they follow the law of diminishing uh, returns. The revisions are never as good as the uh, primary. So, uh, that that was a good case again to show the dealing with a gap. Thank you, Pankaj. Thank so, you. Uh, next will be who's next? Uh, Kuldeep. Right. Kuldeep is uh, in Rajkot and uh, He's going to talk about again on this thing uh, for for fractures, which is something which is not kind of uh, commonly done. But I think as his case will show, there are certain fractures which are very very amenable, or you know, Elizarov is the ideal thing to treat those fractures. Go on, Kuldeep. <laughs> we can see it. Go full screen. Yeah, start. Not audible, uh, louder little. Uh, am I audible, sir? No, no, no. You're not. I can't hear you. Do you have a mic there or what? Your voice is very poor. Go on. Now, am I audible, sir? No, take out that mic of yours. You, you have a, you have a mic. Take it off. <laughs> speak, speak into the. Uh, computer mic itself. Disconnect. No, disconnect it from your computer. Okay. Your headphone. Disconnect it. Okay, sir. Am I audible now? Now you are perfectly audible. So, oh. This is just like the Elizarov. Simple, <clears throat> simple is better. Very fancy Bluetooth and all doesn't work. So, uh, <laughs> this is about one case uh, full screen. Open Make it full screen. screen. Yeah, now you can go full screen and present. Yes. So, uh, it was 1.5 year back. I returned from Mumbai and I was uh, telling my colleagues that oh, I will do Elizaro here. And this was a case where a uh, uh, 40 year male uh, had row open grade 2B tibia fibula fracture, uh, segmental fibula, comminuted tibia, uh, comminution in a middle way. Uh, metaphyseal, uh, typhyseal region, and uh, you can see that.
click once on the slide then it will move or use the arrow key okay yes. so this is the uh, clinical uh, that was taken by my colleague orthopedy uh, that came to them at by 6:30 pm in the evening and uh, it was his uh, uh, thinking that uh, we should go for any something which uh, less damage the patient and help us in uh, uh, getting a good uh, result you can appreciate in ct scan that fracture line is going up to the knee joint intra articularly okay and this is a way so yes uh, with their uh, uh, communication we uh, thought let, let us go for elizaro even it was yeah it was 8:30 pm in the night and i just put in a, this way a neutral frame uh, put in a, see a cortical screw for that middle fragment and applied a neutral frame just so yeah but even though that uh, middle you uh, that open wound that was not coapting the closer was tough so i i let it cap it uh, open let it uh, see it by a plastic surgeon so they came the after fourth post op day because we waited at, uh, it was an open injury road traffic accident maybe some infection or something so let it dress for one or two three days and it was okay seen by plastic surgeon then later they covered with flap on fourth post operative day so at one month okay uh, clinically it looks good the while healed flap clean pin sites and okay it was easy to let us start with the partial weight bearing so at four months uh, it looks okay uh, let it continue so i making uh, more uh, Uh, weight bearing and go on yes i didn't do anything for fibula but at 6 month uh, the 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 alignment looks bit not okay at proximal side and patient is not uh, as good walking as i appreciate so uh, again let us wait for two more month and i waited for two more months so at this is a 8 month follow up you can appreciate there is a uh uh procurvatum uh, patient was having pain on walk uh, he was limping radiologically also it is not uh healed so i uh, decided to let us put in a one more ring as the with the screw that middle fragment have got uh, united so that i can now put in a one ring at that level between first and third ring and uh, strengthen the proximal ring with a two shank spring and uh, put in a bone graft as i opened the fracture site it was a sticky fibula was united uh, you can appreciate nothing was done in my case as well as uh, dr ajit case but fibula is something uh, that unites what either you do not something or do not do something so i uh, i did fibulectomy i thought that uh, compression might not be getting only with the this grafting so i dissected the fibula and uh, so that uh, uh, and make him weight bearing didn't do any more of a compression post operatively but just that fibula resection give me a sort of peace that okay weight bearing will uh, uh, enhance the compressive forces at the fracture site so yes one ring was added and bone grafted fibulectomy was done so four month and total of 12 month of duration four month post bone graft Uh, this is the cm images uh, i take the oblique view and uh, patient looks okay walking well and stress stress on the fixator i applied and then i removed it yes but uh, radiologically it doesn't sound that much uh, cool so i go with a brace application yes this was a uh, before removal at one year of total duration and four month post bone grafting and pinning this was after removal yes i have given him a brace that is at 1.5 year follow up 3 months uh, down the line he is now okay not uh, using brace and walking well this is uh, at 1.5 year you can see the x ray pictures this is his knee function 
uh, it was right side so this is left side and right side few short, uh, few degree short to left side i i would say in a knee flexion that is his uh, cross leg sitting position so yes this is what i learned that elisa was a biological approach in fracture management all uh, my frame was all wire frame in epimetaphyseal region uh, okay that uh, sometime lose uh, uh, i could have used a dummy ring dummy ring uh, that uh, that ring i put later on could have used dummy ring and, or a telescopic rod and uh, after healing of that middle uh, that oblique fragment i would i could have put uh, just the wire and that would have also increased the stability so yes i waited at 8 months i could have intervened earlier and bone grafted it so that will have reduce overall duration or it is my question to the fraternity and mentor and colleagues also that yes the weight bearing should have been delayed i started at 30 35 days uh, i could have been delayed and uh, yes in spite of fibulectomy i could have gone for oblique fibular osteotomy in a second stage where i did a fibular resection of 1.5 cm yes and yes uh, i was happy i was happy but this was uh, being uh, guided by my mentor pariyar sir that yes he has a deformity in sagittal plane yes and later i found out yes it's around 25 degree and uh, when i go through the literature around 10 degrees okay in a sagittal plane it's uh, more of a 15 degree so yes i would have to see the patient for his knee pain uh, his arthritis whether it will progress or how much duration and white need of extensive uh, extension osteotomy at the femur to correct this of a proper weight and if he, he develops pain or that now right now he is okay thank you thank you uh, kuldeep so i think uh, this this presentation is a perfect example of why we should present and by that i mean that when you have to present then you have to collect all the x rays the before x rays the last x ray because you want to show it and when you, when you collect it in in that way you are forced to go through that whole journey of what you did and uh, kind of audit yourself okay what were the things that i did well what were the things that i didn't do well and uh, kuldeep has has uh, you know learned in his from his last slide he has learned a lot of the lessons um kind of already and probably we don't need to uh, tell him much but vasu your comments and suggestions first the first thing first thing is the compound fracture If you are planning to do an illustrative surgery. You don't have to do it in the night, eight o'clock, or ten o'clock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. There is no point in hurrying, hurrying on things. Yeah. Even I don't believe that six hours a surgery for an illustrator. Yeah. I many times I have done because we are all managing six month old. Now yesterday I managed seven year old infected non human. Yeah, yeah. If we are managing such thing, there what is the hurry in managing a fresh compound fracture immediately and all? It, it, sometimes it's a colleague pressure, sir. <laughs> That's it. But we plan it ourselves and do a good job and be comfortable, especially in your earlier cases. Probably, yeah. like Mangal and Badri, me can do it any time in the day. But yeah. you have you need a little bit planning. That yeah. anyway, it's a good case. But here, you know, Mangal was mentioning about the alignment. The once the wound settled down, you could have aligned it earlier itself. no sir i think it it started angulating at around 4 month and when i opened during bone grafting it was so no, stiff no, no. it was from the you see look at the old, old x ray show that the old old images yeah see that uh, yeah it was 6 month yeah yeah but go uh, oh, even before that yeah okay is there okay from the beginning itself it was there yeah it was means i was in a something hope that it, now it it would have started uniting and uh, it was a uh, even a tougher <laughs> case i would say it was a tough case for me sir so i was i think the best time when it's uniting you just help it yeah yeah by correcting it and you don't have to worry about shortening you can shorten it yeah. i probably i will do a corticotomy at 6 weeks and do little more shortening completely alignment is most important thing 
There's nothing wrong in doing one more osteotomy there. Yeah. Before the fibula unites, yeah. I can get back full length. Yeah. We're not having any peroneal issues. Yeah. So we can get the perfect posterior tibial slope. Yeah. yeah. And with this one caver, missing caver here infected by what was that? Which sir? Those are yeah, you go, go home in next slide, please. Yeah, one more. Next slide. Next slide. What is this? This is a uh, addition, sir. I added a ring and uh, fixed it. No, no, but what is this small, small piece there? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it got broken, sir. The KYR removal at that junction was broken, so it remained okay. there. Yeah, yeah. And it goes almost practically anterior to posterior. No, no, it was a sir, horizontal. Yeah. This, that wire is always hori that wire was horizontal. Oblique or hor horizontal. Yeah, it's just the obliquity. Okay. So anyway, you had a real tough time and learned many, many things. Yeah. It's good that in the early stage you learn all these. In the next stage, you'll do it uh, much better. Yeah. Yes. Overall, it's good. Well done. Thank you. Badri? Yeah. So I was just thinking, you know, because Working in the, I don't know whether you guys know nowadays, but here the the care of open fractures is now completely centralized. So, in the whole region, we get all the high energy open fractures to our unit. Uh, they're just not treated in any other hospitals. You know, the ambulance just picks them up and brings them straight to us. So, what would we and we? It's a public funded setup. Care is free. So. Uh, we have plastic surgeons with us five days out of seven. So what would we have done differently? Um, uh, to put this into perspective, in the country, a lot of surgeons in the past would have had a flap and they'd have plated it and it would have come to us almost certainly as, uh, not almost certainly, about a, I think 20, 25% risk of this failing with internal fixation. And then we would have started uh, reconstructing it. Uh, what would we have done differently? What would I have done differently? I think on day one or up to about day seven, it would have been purely soft tissue resuscitation, make sure that the soft tissues are covered, maybe just stabilize it with a monolateral. The frame, I think the frame that you got on at, at this, this particular frame with the two rings, with the, the total of four rings would have gone on at about the seventh day or the 10th day. And potentially, I think we would have avoided the uh, procarbatum, which, which I think was because your two rings were far apart with your yeah. first frame due to the soft tissue problem that you had, you were very wary about putting the second ring where you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But overall, you know, it's a great result. The question I have is, what symptoms does he have? Because these procarbatum in the proximal tibia patients don't like it, you know, they always complain of symptoms. They don't feel that the leg is connected to the body for want of a better word. No, no, and yet, they always yet, no, struggle. I think, I think he is walking without a frame after uh, uh, 12 months. He's happy at present. He's not really? complaining to me. He's happy. He's okay. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, uh, he, it's a procurator and near to the knee joint. Uh, yeah. I should consider his knee pain and yeah. should be vigilant uh, for the further follow up is mandatory. No, no. Overall, it... I mean, you've had a great result for from where you started and considering all the problems you had. But yes. what would you offer him? Would you not offer him a tibial correction? Would you offer him a femoral? Yes, I would correction? offer him. I would offer him. I would wait, sir. I would wait. Initiation yeah. of the pain. I would wait till when he initiate the pain, I think. Yeah. The, so that may be four year, five year down the line. Yeah. Yeah. And that will that he will be able to easily digest as well. <laughs> yeah, he'll it'll, it'll take time, but I'm almost yeah. certain that he'll come and see you again for, yeah, uh, yeah. for the treatment. Yeah, I need to, I need to, I need I might need to correct that. Could they, yes. uh, could they be you were talking discussing about a femoral osteotomy for uh, tibial proper weight? No, 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 TBR. That's, that's what TBR, I was TBR, TBR, You didn't mention TBR, TBR. TBR. You mentioned it. Hmm. Yeah, Which is why I was indirectly asking you what you're going to do. Because you did mention that you're going to correct it in the femur. TBR, sir, I have I have drawn out. I would do osteotomy over there on the probably. Okay. Now the problem is with the procravatum deformity and yeah. increased posterior slope, this yeah. patient will gradually develop the ACL deficient knee. Okay. 
because it will the femur will gradually slide backwards yeah. and you will ACL will get relaxed. And especially okay. it's a manual labor and all. So you, you will have a problem. But the problem in India is many yeah. of us, we had I think we had a very bad injury. We tend yeah. to accept many things. Yeah, yeah. That is, that is, we, think, yeah. we think our patients are all happy. Yeah. So we are just comparing their initial stage and they are happy okay. with what are, what they what they are getting now. But when ah, even with this, this even with this injury, I've explained is that we are just salvaging your limb. Yeah, they, <laughs> you are cutting the first case. Exactly. First case. I've explained that I am just salvaging the limb. I don't need. You might need two surgeries. But, keep, but keep in your mind the normal yeah. alignment and normal values. Get yeah. try to get it back. Yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah. And okay. whenever you are trying so, to make an error, let go, let go, me go, go, let go, me go. jump in here. So you, uh, Kuldeep. Yeah, you've already learned uh, most of the lessons. Yes, uh, some of those have been underlined by uh, Vasu and uh, Badri. Yes, sir. which I want to sort of reiterate. Like the first one is really not necessary to operate in the night, even today. Yeah, yeah, sir. Yes. With all the sort of assistance I have in terms of infrastructure, people, and all that. Yes, sir. This kind of a patient, I will. At the most, put in a standard external fixator or a hybrid till I have, uh, you know, everything set up. Why set up? You need set up in terms of the equipment. You yes, need sir. set up in terms of the CM. I'll tell you one of the reasons why you have got into Prokarvatam because at nine o'clock in the night, you don't feel like Aram say, take a perfect lateral if the lat night is not going to be Whereas if you are doing this in the day, you will want to see what is the inclination of my ring in the lateral relative to the tibial plateau. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? You will see to it. So the, you don't have, especially in the periphery, yeah, yeah, you will not have the number of people who are there in the theater in the morning yes, compared yes. to the night. So yes. when the uh, compound fracture comes, what is the important debridement and mm -hmm. stabilization? Yes, yes. Not definitive fixation. That's that's number one. Second, you already pointed out in terms of the uh, stability and uh, you know early intervention. So three months, four months, if things are not showing signs of healing, I would look at it and explain to the patient that yes, sir. Yes. If you if I don't do this now, then you are going to take a very long time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You are probably helped by the fact that you know this. Uh, uh, lockdown was going on, yeah. so the patient wasn't eating your brains. Otherwise, you would have had the patient coming every two weeks, three weeks. Ab abhi kab niklega, kab niklega. Ah, yes. So the third, <laughs> final thing is yeah. in this, in terms of the deformity. All of us have gone through this. Vasu, yes. Badri, me, all of us have gone through this. Yes. In difficult situations, just getting union, we say, oh boy, you know, yeah, yeah. good thing. Yeah. It was a very <laughs> difficult fracture. At least we managed to get united. Yes. Now, once we've done two, three, four of these and they have got united, but we've got something remaining, yes. then the fifth time we say, no, I, I don't want to do a second procedure for this fellow and, and we will correct it. But now, yes, this is as Badri pointed out, this is definitely going to give you trouble. So, what I would explain to the patient is, Deko, mm -hmm. this joint is going to get Spoiled. Yes, yes, yes. It will be better if we correct this. You take a year off yeah, yeah. Yes, from sir. the doctors yes, and sir. then come back and then we will do it. So yes. don't wait for him to come back. You okay. put it proactively to him that this is going to go bad. Yeah, so okay. it's better that we do it when everything you, you have under your control. So you can decide the time, etc, etc, etc. So approach it that way. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Right. So that's that's a again a great case, and I think cases which show us problems uh, are the ones which actually show us the most uh, things to learn. So now the last case by Jijesh. Uh, Jijesh is one of our um, earliest fellows, and Jijesh is now going grey in the hair. He's getting ready to become one of the mentors himself. So. Um, and this case, I specifically asked him to put because this shows the power of uh, Elizarov even for soft tissue uh, deformities. Go on, Jijesh. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, good morning. Okay. Jijesh, one, one sec, one sec. Sorry. There, there is a comment on... Uh, this. Is, there is a comment on... Uh, 
the the last case which i'll just uh, from dr ashok khandaka who's a very senior uh, orthopedic surgeon deals with a lot of trauma in uh, jaipur so this kind of case i guess he gets about couple of them uh, at you know at least two or three of them in in a week so he's written my initial treatment will be a ring fixator and wound coverage followed by a long lcp on the lateral side once soft callus has formed so as to avoid deformity and shorten the time which is a, a, a valid approach in the sense that you get it get get over the the uh, compound time the the time that the fracture is the open fracture and once everything is healed then slide a plate down um, i think all three of us made the point that avoidance of deformity you can do with the frame itself you don't need to put in a, a plate but yes to uh, shorten the time on in the fixator sliding in a plate and fixing it on the lateral side is a valid approach there is uh, dr pai pk pai who has asked sir despite being intra articular type 6 why no raft screws were used uh, the answer to that i will give the the reason why no you don't need raft screws the raft screws are really used to hold depressed fractures up and per se there was no uh, sort of displacement major displacement at least that i could make out on this ct there was intra articular extension so what that needed was for it to be compressed and when you use oblique uh elisar of wires you can get a good hold and a good compression on these uh, fractures at the most you may need to use uh or rather i would probably use uh, olive wires i didn't notice whether he had had you used olives kuldeep on that on the proximal ring no i think i did not okay so that would be one thing that yes you can use olives and but you can get a good hold on that proximal uh this thing and it is it is a cancellous bone it heals off without any trouble so i hope that answers your question sorry ji so you can go on thank you sir thank you so i am going to present a case of wrist contracture deformity in a 15 year old boy of 10 year duration so this is my clay is 15 year old boy presented to me with wrist contracture on left side with deformity of 10 year duration and which was caused by crush injury during childhood so he had a multiple surgeries following that flap coverage including flap coverage by plastic surgeon and later he developed the deformity and which was also tried to correct but could not succeed so he presented me me with like, like this deformity where you can see the wrist is deformed where manus valgus deformity with a dorsiflexion deformity and the fingers are stiff so these are his clinical findings the on examination he had fixed contracture of the wrist in radial deviated and dorsiflex position that is minus valgus and dorsiflex position there is no wrist movements only a jog of movements of person resection of pronation and supination of person and cp joints were also fixed jog of movements only and pip and dip joints were minimal movements person no sensory or this neurovascular deficit these are his x rays where you can see this is minus valgus and dorsiflexion deformity with there is no bony deformity as per here and there is no bony fracture also old malunate nothing is there so only pure soft tissue contracture click click on the slide once and then it will move so these are his problems there is this Contracts in radial deviated position, no dorsiflexion or trauma fraction, resection of pronation and supination, MCP joints is stiff in extension, jog of movements at MCP joint, minimal movements at the DAP and PAP, no bony deformity, no neurovascular problems. So how to treat this case? So can, I, can you straighten this wrist alone? Or can you provide the movements at the wrist also? Or if corrected, how many days the correction will last? So what are the options here? so the options here are the arthrodesis arthrodiastasis or open release for which method would you use so i evaluated further 3d ct was done there is no bony architecture was normal no uh, so no sensory problems and advised a consultation from plastic surgery they told nothing to be done leave him alone so since the child want to correct his deformity assist further as in any deformity you take the true epn lateral and assess it whether it's a coronal plane sagittal plane and oblique plane 
deformity you find the cora see here the cora said the rest the rest no bond deformity this was my plan so i i decided to correct with a gradual correction with application of elizaro apply two rings in the metacarpals and two rings in the forearm and hinge keep the hinge at the cora level away from the convex border that is osteotomy rule even though it is a, no not a body deformity so you can follow this osteotomy rule number here and keep the hinge at the aca so that the, uh, there won't be any any uh, 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 translation or anything will be happen so directly it is a uh, contracture you can correct it so that distraction at the joint can occur during the correction and further once it is correct the contracture you can over distract it so apply two rings here two rings in the metacarpals and you distract keep the hinge there and distract it and this is the x rays after the application of the ring and you can distract by the following the law of similar triangle the rate of distraction can calculate and can do it so gradually distract it and correct the deformity and initially before correction you can uh, distract the ring uh, without correct angular correction then you uh, after that for 5 to 7 mm you or uh, correct uh, distract it then you correct angular deformity then you over distract it so these are the clinical pictures in x ray after the correction of the deformity were then added further distraction is also also added so that these are the clinical picture where you can see the before correction after correction it was completely straightened so these are the results deformity was corrected in 6 weeks time and after correction ring was kept it for 6 weeks then i daily day time gradual correction in alnar and david in the radial deviated motion and night time i just kept it in alnar deviated position then remove the ring after uh, 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 attaining this uh, movements then it was even on the praise so these are immediately after removal of the ring so you can see the movements is regained the wrist movements regained the mcp joint and the pap and dap joints are improving so now we can keep his uh, wrist in a dorsiflex position so after the removal of the ring i applied a turnobuckle brace for a few months so that he can do the daily uh, radial and ulnar deviated position and uh, then he can night time is to keep in ulnar deviated position so that the the deformity can i expect the deformity can re recur but so i did this so now he is fine and these are this uh, lateral and ap views of clinical pictures and x rays and these are his movements after one year so you can have the uh, uh, finger movements and these are uh, a dorsiflexion uh, uh, and the palmar flexion uh, radial deviation ulnar deviation pronation supination so almost the near normal function is got and flexion is also normal then finger movements so the learning points here are the in this type of contra long standing uh, contractures the standard treatment for this contracture has been the surgical ways in in cover with full thick, uh, thickness graft by the plastic surgeons there are inherent complications in this while doing this, uh, like this open release and damage to the neurovascular bundle can occur finger tip ischemia can occur in a chronic, chronically contracted finger as it acutely straight or putting stretch on the neurovascular bundles and a contracted but uninjured tendon preventing the full straightening of the Uh, finger can is another problem, and wound infection is if you do an acute uh, open release and correction. So by distension straightening, the principle of a gradual dynamic lengthening of the skin and soft tissue are played. So all tissues get stretched out, thus maintaining a sense sensate pliable skin cover. So that uh, the sensory that is uh, uh, sensation also you can regain by doing this gradual distension. so you can apply up this even though it is a not a body deformity the principle of deformity correction also you can apply in this uh, wrist contracture deformity so as i pointed out acute correction there are a lot of issues healing will be a problem like in bony correction also shortening of the limb neurovascular injury soft tissue issues or so many issues can occur so gradual correction the advantage of biology is not disturbed here healing will be good no neurovascular injury follows the principle of distraction of osteogenesis so my take home message is in joint contracture the options available are arthrolysis arthrodiastesis or arthrodesis so if possible you can do the gradual correction has advantage over acute correction neurovascular injury is very less in gradual distraction 
post correction physio is more important than getting the correction thank you uh, thank you jijesh so okay. that 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 is uh, the role of elizarov in uh, soft tissue contractures i think especially in these areas there is a significant role uh, for that even as a pre you know say radial club hand and stuff distracting it out gradually and then doing whatever acute procedure needs to be done has got a lot to say uh, in favor of it badri your thoughts so i was just thinking what an extraordinary case you know um how just just out of for my own learning really the the hinges were they uniplanar or both the hinges were uniplanar the dorsal and the palmar hinge yes okay because you've got such a, and how did you monitor radiologically or clinically your correction where it was happening this is for my own learning rather than any teaching points yeah so here my uh, i followed the western the roll number here like in uh, deformity correction i kept the hinge at the, away from the convex border so that yeah. by correcting the angular correction i can attain the distension at the joint also so okay. i severely severely took every uh, week i took x ray and assessed by, by a true lateral true uh, lateral uh, ap view so that the hinges uh, uh, hinges are superimposing so that i can uh, assess the uh, whether it is distracting or not no jijesh jijesh one sec jijesh one sec what he, i think what he is asking is in this kind of a case particularly how do you decide the level of your hinge yeah how how much further away from the um how much distal to the ulna is, is it so what is your line so what i saw from there was you've drawn a, a radial line a, a mid axial line let us say of the palm and then you've taken the uh, oblique uh, transect transect uh, uh, oblique bisector bisector and where it comes on to the skin on to the ulnar side that is where was the level of your hinge correct yeah yes sir that 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 slide should show it i think it's a okay when just go to your planning slide yeah yeah the upper one the upper one that's right yeah so here you know you got your two axial lines and then you need to show what he's saying is the the bisector and where you are planning to put your hinge in this case i think you put your hinge on the surface at the level of the surface of the skin yes so that you are getting distraction on the radial side as well as the uh, ulnar side of the wrist per se yes correct correct sir that yeah. is yeah yes, sir jj jj sir no this is you don't have to think about even this what i do is you get you you are the dorsal dorsal flexion contracture there yes sir sir Yes. the radial deviation you measure it yes. just make an oblique plane calculation yes and keep the hinge at the ulna uh, that means the uh, ulna uh, styloid level correct and the oblique plane you distract from the uh, opposite side like yes. your oblique planning yes and once you get it there you have to go to the opposite side and your distraction rate is normally for the bone it's 1 mm yes here i will go for 2 mm per day <laughs> here the uh, i i uh, i know but watching the watching the scar yeah so scar what the scar because if i get a distraction uh, yeah. say if i can get it about 3 uh, weeks time or one month time my maturation time is the double of it yes because the scar has a tendency to go back yes. there's a bio memory there yes so you have to keep it for double the time not 6 week distraction means 3 uh, months of uh, maturation time yeah it other it will go back yeah and it must go to the extreme ulnar deviation and palmar flexion yeah just to the opposite side correct you, you can keep a hinge and mobilize it you can use universal hinges and mobilize it on that and then remove it yeah so are you suggesting that we overcorrect a lot also or yeah yeah till till like the opposite side okay yeah. Yeah, you corrected. Uh, I want to say corrected neutral. Then I over corrected to ulnar side. And yeah. I for, uh, you can check from the other side. No, how much ulnar deviation there from there and palmar flexion. Yeah. So that much you must go because that much relaxation must be there on this side. No. 
So one thing I want to say tell is since it's not a pure bony deformity, so I didn't put the oblique plane calculation since I can distract the hinge uh, the joint so that. Uh, uh, that's can... what I'm saying. This one is just like a hypertrophic non-union with the deformity. Yeah. In the hypertrophic non-union, as your character it will heal. Here the joint is going to get distracted, then it will mob. It will be mobile. Yes. So there are there are then that the, there are two uh, ways of looking at it. One, what Vasu is saying, that you plan it as an oblique plane, and yeah. the other is what Jijesh has done. What Jijesh has done essentially is he has yeah. distracted the joint. Yeah. Once you distract the joint, the uh, you know dorsal and the ulnar soft tissues are stretched. We use this same sort of principle for uh, equinus, equinus of the foot. You get mm -hmm. your soft tissues stretched out. So now the soft tissues are lax enough to allow your dorsiflexion and uh, palmiflexion. So whatever tissues have hypertrophied on the on the sort of dorsal side, they are being stretched out. So there, there is a point uh, where you, I, I could say that you know gradual distraction at one millimeter per day will help this soft tissue uh, actually grow. kind of grow rather than uh, stretch it out. So there may be a case for gradual uh, continuing with the one millimeter per day rule. That is number one. The other thing I would look no. at uh, differently in terms of what uh, you have done is it. Be I find it difficult to visualize. So I would probably use one single ring with drop wires. So I'm getting a broader area of fixation, but um, I don't have so much metal over there. That's number one. And number two is, I think this kind of a case is ideal for six axis because you can, you can put your virtual hinge exactly where you want. And if you find that, because you know, when we do Coley's distraction and all that distraction treatment, if you over distract, you cause a dystrophy in that limb. In, if you over distract with the Coley's, not only do the, uh, not only does the wrist, no, sorry, the, the distal radius stretch out, but the intercarpals also stretch out. So with, with a, a six axis, you can actually dial in exactly what correction you want. And like what Vasu was saying, you can dial in in this direction also on the fly. You know, every time you, you see the patient, you, you can change it. And finally, once you've got this, you can do an accelerated program with the six axis to give ulnar deviation, radial deviation, as well as dorsiflexion, uh, palmiflexion, which a hinge tends to uh, restrict. But I think in terms of the fact that, uh, you know, this, this, is, this demonstrates the fact that they will be always, you know, slightly different. I will do it slightly differently. Badri would do it slightly different. And I think Vasu would do it slightly different. But the, the underlying principle being that tough contracted tissues, whether they be deep to the skin or the skin itself, they respond very nicely to uh, gradual distraction. And there are a couple of comments. Priya, Priya Vrata has commented, great presentation, sir. And Ashok Khandaka again has said, excellent demonstration of the power of Elizarov in any difficult situation and also for soft tissue contracture. So a uh, great uh, presentation, Jijesh. Thank you very much. And now we go to the last part. I will ask uh, Divya now to discuss or to show how we, how we uh, do these uh, deformity correct. Though we are, we do a lot of Elizabeth. There is also, uh, you know, deformity correction. And personally, I think I find that uh, internal fixation, I think there are now two, three, what do you call, not schools of thought, but uh, someone like Vasu will use the Elizabeth uh, everywhere and he will try to shoot us down when we say use internal fixation. No, Vasu, I'm just joking. I know he uses... I know he uses internal fixation also. Uh, someone like uh, Badri, I think, tends to uh, use the fixators and then, if I know, uh, if I'm reading him correctly, tends to, you know, use internal fixation to reduce the external fixation time. Yeah. 
we do a lot of that yeah and uh, we we kind of do a almost equal balance of that i also now tending towards yes okay how can we reduce fixators by putting in internal fixation but there are certain situations where i will not even consider the use of uh, an external fixator so um, divya you can go ahead divya is uh, an associate uh, with me he's been with me for uh, a long time he, he hopefully uh, thinks the way that i think go on divya good morning everyone uh, we're discussing distal femur osteotomy for a valgus deformity using uh, internal fixation and a medial closing wedge osteotomy so this varus osteotomy for dfo it, the approach is uh, subvastus you using a medial distal femur tomofix implant which is anatomically designed and site specific this is a low profile implant and helps to uh, fix the osteotomy really well and without creating much trouble for the patient So this 13 year old girl presents with knock knees and a history of all, already attempted medial femoral and tibial hemi epiphysiodesis which did not really improve much with that treatment and she presented with the uh, severe deformity she had trouble walking the thighs would rub against each other and this was more of a cosmetic correction which was being uh, presented rather than any uh, pain in the knee a sag sagittal uh, plane there was no deformity thigh foot axis there was no rotational issues and this was a gait you can see that the thighs are really rubbing against each other the knees are really knocking so for a valgus deformity what the full length x ray which we generally do for uh, any deformity with a patella centered this is slightly different here in valgus deformity because uh, we need to the patella is really not centered well because of the long standing valgus and tends to subluxate laterally and this is evident by the fact uh, when we do a patella centered uh, x ray which is on the left and slightly externally rotated on the right side which is giving a full profile of the distal femur the hk is slightly different on each and lfa is different so what do we need to see on a x ray is uh, when the when we do a patella centered view on uh, in these valgus deformities and there is an overlap of the lateral condyle the notch is really not flat as compared to slightly externally rotated this is showing you the joint lines very well there's no overlap and the femoral notch is flatter on this side so this is the x ray this is the rotation which we need to use for planning so trauma cat planning is done measurements did show slight abnormal mpta but which was just a couple of degrees over the normal so we wanted to overcorrect slightly in the femur to achieve a 180 degree hk the patient's place to find the hip to ankle should be well visible in the cm preferably a sterile tunique which we use a hemaclear um, here folded pillows sheets are required uh, we we use this uh, printed protractor on a transparency uh, which we place on the cm screen to measure the angles this helps us to guide intra op uh, measurement of the ankles use a new blade preferably for the power saw radio solution spikes really help well when we are doing the osteotomy placing the k wires 
so check the alignment uh, pre op at the uh, under cm measure the angles uh, check there is no sagittal deformity as well mark the patella mark the joint line with a uh, k y the axis used here is with, uh, take the cm into lateral get a perfectly superimposed lateral uh, condylar axis which is also the flexion extension axis of the knee and then rotate the cm perpendicular keep the limb in the same position and uh, put in a vertical k wire marked by the red arrow here which will always help you to guide your uh, rotation of the limb so this is a slightly externally rotated position it's not a perfectly cent uh, patella centered so this is the position where we did all, all our measurements this is where the planning is done so the surgery is performed in the same position of the limb Andromedial incision is taken and a subastus approach incise the fascia in line with that uh, with the skin incision uh, go go right uh, posterior to the edge of the media uh, vastus medialis where it's attaching to the intermuscular septum raise it off from the intermuscular septum and pass home and retractors anteriorly posteriorly raise the um, periosteum anteriorly and posteriorly then again re reposition your home and retractors They, they pass subperiosteal. So we have created a tunnel basically where, where we'll be safely doing the osteo osteotomy. Then you slide up periosteal elevator or Cobb's elevator submuscular, create a tunnel for the proximal limb of the plate, slide the plate on, check the placement of the plate correctly, and mark the osteotomy. So that you are getting this uh, distally, you are getting four screws into the condyles. Then pa uh, pass your first K wire, which is aiming right towards the edge of the condyle. Initially, we were we have been doing it passing towards the epicondyle. But uh, we have now realized that that tends to cut into the condyle. So pass the K wire a little more horizontal, aiming to aiming somewhere here, and pass the second K wire at a desired wedge resection, which is measured according to your planning. So measure it with an osteotome or a scale, mark it, uh, then pass the guide wire converging on to the earlier one somewhere falling a little short of lateral cortex. So one can place uh, uh, parallel K wires. So four K wires, sometimes in smaller patients, these four K wires can come in, in the way of your uh, saw blade. So there's not enough space. Then you can use just two K wires. And this is a biplanar osteotomy. So the posterior three fourth is the vertical limb and then an oblique oblique uh, biplane just for the proximal tibia uh, tomophix open wedge uh, osteotomy which we do for there we have the biplanar limb similarly here the biplanar limb goes all the way out there use uh, the saw blades here that's where the radial eustin spikes will really be useful and you can see that uh, where your uh, saw blade has gone to what depth they take the wedge and remove the bone that's the biplanar limb now then gently try close the osteotomy that will keeping that lateral hinge uh, intact and Position your plate andromedially. First, fix the distal screws. 
also make sure after uh, the plate is well aligned in the sagittal uh, plane before you end on uh, go on to put the second screw after the first screw go get into the get the cm into lateral position check your plate placement correctly and then only go ahead and finish your four distal screws fixation add an oblique compression screw this will help the obliquity will also obliquity of this screw this is a cortical screw so this will help to compress on the far side as well as we can this will help you to dial in the alignment uh, by uh, we first you put in the screw cross check what, what's the alignment if you you have still under corrected you tighten the screw a little bit more cross check and once the alignment is corrected then you can fi finalize the fix fixation by the proximal locking screws finally replace the cortical screw by another locking screw and your fixation is done that is the biplanar limb which is already in contact there and you can hardly see the osteotomy so well compressed as a clinical pick of the biplanar limb and the post-op x-rays showing really the same picture so this closing wedge osteotomy allows you early weight bearing we will initially start with touchdown weight bearing till the patient is comfortable with the walker in two to three weeks then we move on to partial weight bearing and by about six to eight weeks they are full weight bearing and good to go with either a stick or no uh, walking aid so this is a school going girl so now ready for the other side same plan followed for the right side from a get planning, same MPTA again, 92 here, aiming for a 90 degree LDFA at the distal femur. Same plan is followed. So these are the X rays, serial X rays for her right side. That's one month, two months, really, most of it as healed. And this is at the seven month follow up. At one month itself, you are hardly able to see the osteotomy line. At two months, it's showing well healed already. And that's seven months. Same, similar picture for the left side. Well healed. And that's the final function at one year. So this is basically a comparison of a pre-op and post-op gait. Showing a good alignment and comfortable walking. And a well-corrected limb. So there are a few things I want to point out here which goes more as tips and tricks uh, to avoid any pit, pitfalls and the mistakes we have encountered. Oftentimes, as this orange arrow is showing, the lateral cortex is, uh, the saw blade doesn't reach there or tends to deviate if the bone is really hard. And oftentimes the lateral cortex there is left intact and will not allow you to fully close the osteotomy. Then you can weaken this area using a 4.5 mm or 3.2 mm drill bit and then uh, close the osteotomy. Excessive force while closing the osteotomy or if there's a bony ridge there or like in this instance when the osteotomy is too low it's reaching into that lateral condyle there. Then uh, this or when uh, the K wires which are falling short of lateral cortex if they're too much inside then what becomes is the hinge is here 
and this sort of becomes like a neutral wedge. So this part will close and the far cortex, lateral cortex will tend to open. So there's no trouble creating a neutral wedge there. But what happens is if uh, when we are putting the oblique compression screw there, uh, when you tighten it, so because there's no intact lateral hinge there, you may overcorrect on table with the compression screw. So one needs to be careful, cross check the alignment again, and then only finalize the fixation. Because of uh, the soft tissues being intact there, this being a uh, periosteum being intact on this side, uh, even if it remains open there, it heals off in uh, three to four months without much trouble. The medial side as it is in, is in contact, the biplanar limb also is in contact. So overall healing is uh, much more predictable even if this neutral wedge happens. So the way around that is, uh, which is what we have now started doing, is aim with the wires slightly higher. Let the uh, wires uh, meet at the lateral cortex or a little beyond so that your saw blade can reach this area and um, leave the lateral cortex intact to avoid that neutral wedge. Sometimes the lateral hinge can break. And uh, as shown by this orange arrow, one can temporarily fix it with K wires, fix the wires such that your plate fixation, it doesn't come in the way of the fixation. And uh, then pass on your screws and fix, fix it the plate. Now, when, when we are doing this, again, like I pointed out earlier, and when we are do, putting the oblique compression screw, because the lateral hinge is broken here, as the screw is going to pull the bone towards the plate. And this may create some translation or un, unwanted opening of that uh, lateral cortex hinge. So loosen the screw then. Uh, achieve panel compression or and then lock it with a locking screw proximally at that level. So the take home messages uh, here are a biplanar closing wedge osteotomy is really stable even if uh, uh, there is issues sometimes with the neutral hinge or the lat lateral hinge breaking. The implant is uh, good enough. The biplanar closing wedge gives you a larger surface area of contact and predictable healing. The medial uh, tomofix implant is um, stable. It gives you four long screws in the distal, in the condylar area. And it's uh, such a low profile implant that uh, the patient doesn't really have any functional deficit even right after the fixation. Uh, thank you all for patient listening. Thank you, Divya. So I think that that was the, the complete story about uh, how we started with the medial tomofix and the lessons we've learned along the way. And I think the most important lesson we learned uh, was the fact of understanding the deformity. Uh, the point that he pointed out about keeping it slightly externally rotated so that the patella is not central as has been told in the books, but slightly off. And look at the femoral condyle contour as well as the fact that there is no overlap between the femur and the tibia. The moment you see an overlap between the femur and the tibia on the x-ray, Either you've done it too much internal rotation or there is an additional uh, recurvatum, procurvatum uh, deformity. That's the only reason why you would get. Otherwise, you should be able to see the joint line 
well. And once you planned in that position, you do your uh, correction also in that position. This uh, technique of the K wire, which he pointed out, is, uh, you know, I think that is uh, what Staubli calls, I, this is kind of stolen or picked up from Alex Staubli, what he calls the cheap navigation. You do your X-ray, put the K wire perfectly straight, and then you only have to look at the orientation of the K wire to ensure that you're rotate, you are you know working in the correct rotation. You don't have to keep checking on the C arm. It reduces your uh, radiation quite a bit. So um, the, and these these we see these very often. Now, these are patients who are coming. This girl was very clear that she wanted a cosmetic. Uh, correction. As an Elizabeth surgeon or as a deformity surgeon, I know that she is going to develop arthritic changes because of overloading later on. But these uh, people are very clear and we've done quite a few of them now. They come at this age, 15, 16, 17, uh, for gross deformity, wanting it corrected cosmetically. And I think this is a lovely functional method of of uh, correcting it. Vasu, your thoughts? You're muted. Yes. <laughs> there are so many ways to build a catch. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you, you like the middle plate. I like the lateral plate. It's much more easier, but I may I make it completely different way. The rostotomy line entirely is different, but that based on something like you can say that misusing osteotomy rules. Using osteotomy rules. No, so you do an opening wedge on the lateral side. No, I initially I was taking a closing wedge. Nowadays I st I stop taking any wedges out. No wedges, just do like an oblique osteotomy and correct it. Okay, with translation. Yeah, with translation. Okay. Then almost now what I do is I take like a I take the core to the lateral the 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 convex border, make like a dome like thing, and you don't have to be perfect dome. I make a slope in that osteotomy, put a parallel screw in the distal end, put the plate there, and medial lateral uh, uh, translation I correct it with a dummy screw. Right. The, the reason why I like this is uh, for that biplanar thing. That yeah. biplanar, it, it is so good for preventing uh, rotations. Right. Yeah. And within four, six weeks, that, that thing has healed. So we are we are getting yeah. more and more, yeah, we, uh, you yeah, know, positive. Osteotomy, Day one, it is healed. It looked like day one healed. Yes. So, we, we are getting more uh, confident about get, allowing them uh, early weight bearing. That's that's yeah. one of the reasons why I, you know, love yeah. this. And, and that's therapy. why you can you can get away with a with a small plate. Yes. A low profile yes. plate. Because exactly. by, by design, the osteotomy is a stable design. Stable. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. When so, I'm that, doing... that is why he, he took so much trouble to point out all the ways of, you know, avoiding yeah. trouble in terms of breaking the hinge and things like that. One thing I think he didn't point out was, uh, we've, we've learned it along, is that if you try and correct it in one go, it, it, it might break. Yeah. But what, what I do now is give it a little bit of varus. Yeah. Wait, so the academy has not closed. Again, give it a little more. So over a period of about four or five minutes, if I keep doing it very beautifully, you know, it will it will close without any uh, break. So the most of the times I think that it has broken will be either technically we have not done a proper uh, job in terms of where the apex of the wedge is, or we've been in a hurry. That okay, let's close it. No, if if you take care of those two things, this thing is uh, stable as hell. And this this again, see. I, I keep telling uh, my fellows and stuff that learning is is not related to only Elizarov or only nailing or only plating. This, what I'm talking about now, you've got a stable configuration inside. So on the surface, you need a very, very uh, relatively light plate. You know, the concept of internal stability requiring lesser frame components outside is something we've learned also from the Elizera. So these are just kind of, you, you can transfer it from here to there. The principles don't change, whether you're using internal or external. Yeah. How do you do this? Do you use a fracture table? No, no. Supine. Yeah. So that means you need a good assistant. No. 
I put I put uh, bumps etc. Okay. To ensure that it is in the right position, and then that K wire. So yeah. once the K wire is there, the assistant only has to look at the one uh, K wire. Everything else is is driven by uh, guides. Yeah. What I do, I do on a fracture table. Hmm. I keep it there. After osteotomy, my first wire will be something like a, a parallel wire to the knee joint. Hmm. Put a long, like three point five. I mean, four point five transco. I put it in, and that one I use as a J. I mean, as a lever to correct it slowly. Yeah, and that hole I use it for logging screw. Okay, so now what you can do is say maybe over the next month or couple of months, you, the next case that you do, make a presentation of that, and then so you show us a different. And and and, and, and those cases I do simult bilateral, simult in one go. Okay. You want a fracture table, no? And see, I told you, no, plastic surgeon and you, same principle. You have not learnt all your lessons that need to <laughs> be. <done. laughs> Badri, your thoughts, please. So, uh, you know what I would, uh, it, it was a it was a wonderful presentation, and I because uh, virtually all of these are done by at least in my in the uk by osteotomy surgeons as opposed to limb recon surgeons because they do these degrees of deformities and we do the bigger ones and the ones that need simultaneous lengthening and all that but a lot of the tips that you showed um, are great because i often see the failures of these the ones that they've cracked the femur doing it or the ones that during the correction there's been gross translation and they land up in problems so uh, from the, uh, as like Wasu, I don't do the medial close wedge at all, uh, partly because of the uh, fact that other people are doing it. But I think, Mangal, if you were to do this as a video intraoperative with a lot of screenshots, I think it'd be a wonderful educational thing that you can put on your channel for others to learn. All these tips that you showed are not there in the books, you know, and I think a lot of the uh, failures of people who do these occasionally are due to the fact that um, they don't do they don't follow all the tips that you showed. I really like the concept of your intraoperative uh, um, alignment check. You know the desi goniometer, whatever you said. That was that was a great one too, because even though we we use that long rod, uh, there's there's always a bit of you know you can fudge it a bit. And then what we do is we uh, do the correction, and then one of us descrubs and puts the numbers on the on the um, at least the image intensifiers we have. We can uh, draw the lines and check the ALDFA. That's the way we're doing it. But I never never thought about using a protractor and using it on the screen. I think that's a great idea to check and draw. There is, the there is uh, you you are, I think you understand enough Hindi. So there is a yeah. Saying which says Majburi ka naam Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you don't have a CM which allows you that and yeah. you want to be accurate. I mean, this started off even when I came back uh, uh, after my fellowship with Dr. Paley. Yeah. We used to do all this fancy planning with the full yeah. length x rays and we didn't have full and length x rays. And... So, I said, now I have to have full length x rays. So, we worked out a method where, where you know, we, we stacked three analog cassettes and then worked out a way of uh, this thing in it. So now that we have been using this, we've realized that this is accurate because whatever we measure on the, uh, on the X-ray is the same is that we measure on our pre-op. Occasionally, if we find it's <clears> different, that means there's something, either we made a mistake or something, but otherwise, yeah. you know, the pre-op measurement is 79. Uh, CR measurement will be 78, 79, yeah. 80. Yeah. Yeah. So there they, we know that, okay, even if after we correct it, we can rely on this uh, measurement. So that way it, it works uh, well. No, it's yeah, I think, yes, exactly. we'll, we'll, make a, we'll make a video. The, taking the, uh, you know, pictures was the first step. We'll make a proper video of uh, the whole thing. Mangal. Yes, Vasu. Yeah, some of these patients will have a mild, like uh, three or four degrees of alkis in the TPA. Yes. So, what will be your uh, LDFA, your final LDFA settling? Because this is a bilateral case. You are wait. You cannot. You are most of the case. You may not get the opposite side to compare. Yes. So, what will be your target LDFA? Ninety ninety one. So you go for the higher value. 
90 to 91 that's it yeah like this girl she had two degrees of uh, valgus in the tibia so okay. i'm looking that i should get a straight mechanical axis and i shouldn't have to correct more than uh, 1991 because then again i'm le- leading to a abnormal joint okay. so if that is the case in some cases we we will then we will do a uh, tibial correction yes. also up to 2 degrees okay actually this girl if i am not mistaken was consented for uh, tibia as well as pima okay and then at the end once we get the ldfa ldfa to what we want and then we check the hka and that is straight then we say that okay that is all right so then we didn't do the tibia for her but she was consented for uh, both Okay. Thank you. Right. Nice presentation, Divya. So, thank you, sir. Uh-huh. There is a question from uh, Dr. Jijesh. How do we decide the fixation in valgus knee? Whether you want to do a DFO and a plate or a laser of correction? I think it's already been answered many ways to build the cat. Um, laser of fixation, as it is, uh, wonderful gradu- idea. Gradual correction, e- pretty easy for the patient. Uh, if no. you are open yeah. wedge. Correct. with the advent of lock in plate i think the indication of illusor for a supracondylar osteotomy has come down yes definitely no, much uh, more fast what, what did jijesh ask for for valgus femur or for valgus limb valgus knee he asked dfo yeah, okay. yeah jijesh mother had a illusor by, by me long back by illusor that time lock in plate was not there not available yeah but today i think uh, because uh, using the illusor of on the knee has got downsides so for if, if, when you talk of the knee i would say the component of the femur i will correct it by a plate whatever may be the issue i think that is my preferred method for the tibia you can argue two ways one if you are if you are very sure of your correction uh, you can do a closing wedge which i have done in uh, multiple cases but if you are worried or it's a little bit of an excessive deformity or you want to play safe then definitely for the tibia you can do it with an illusor so that ad- uh, gives you the advantage of being able to dial in your correction to perfection today i believe that i'm reasonably good in terms of ensuring that yes what i'm getting is uh, is accurate conversely in a varus deformity of the knee of the limb uh i still feel that i cannot get a, a, you know i cannot judge the accuracy of the correction because the lateral laxity i am not able to to judge so these children 15 16 70 they haven't still developed a large amount of laxity so the all the deformity is purely bony so you don't need to factor in any soft tissue correction but if it say if it was an adult and there is a significant amount of medial laxity i may there also consider the use of an illusor of so i can get my deformity correction just uh, right because i think in in varus correction also it is important to get your mechanical axis uh, absolutely perfect if they are already arthritic on the lateral side if you go too much medial you are going to create you know medial overloading so you want to be kind of bang in the uh, center so depending on on the case but distal femur almost always uh, it would be a plate because it's very easy to get that correction you are muted <laughs> so what about the age group near the skeletal maturity uh, means uh, 13 to 18 years so so that age group yeah do you recommend uh, dfo with the plate or uh... yeah you can you can do it slightly la- uh, higher up Okay. yeah uh, and uh, make the osteotomy a little more oblique so that you have space for the screws without going uh, into the epiphysis but near skeletal maturity if you go into the you know a- across the epiphysis also i don't think it's it's a big um, issue so are there any more questions on youtube no majburi par mahatma gandhi mangal hi pas theek hai all right i think um, I, that that was a great uh, session we we stuck to uh, time everybody presented cases you know which were 
different from each other and enhancing all the sort of points that we keep making about Elisara. So thank you all the uh, presenters. Thank you very much, Badri, for waking up at what? Five in the morning. Um, we normally have this at you know 9.30. I thought it, it would be around six. So I still miscalculated, you know, I wanted to not trouble you too much. And um, thank you, Vasu, also. Um, as I said, this will be a monthly feature. And uh, hopefully, we will uh, continue to enhance this as a learning tool um, in the future. I'm, I'm discussing with uh, Vasu and Badri other ways that we can further improve this as a learning tool for, you know, generally with Elizabeth, and I'm sure that we will uh, take this forward. So uh, we will end, uh, Ashok, can we end the uh, streaming now? Just wait, and then everyone can hold on 